Welcome to my channel. This is Franco Pantaleon. In this video, we will take up moment of inertia. We will cover the following. We will cover the centroidal moment of inertia about the x and y axis. We will also cover the polar moment of inertia and the transfer formula for moment of inertia and we will have some illustrative examples. So we have here a table for the formulas for different moment of inertia. So we have here for the first column is the formula for the moment of inertia about the centroidal axis. So we have uh, x axis, y, and we also have a polar moment of inertia about point O. So, if we wanted to determine the moment of inertia about the x-axis, we simply have this formula. And by the way, the moment of inertia is the second moment of an area. So previously in the uh, topic under centroid, the centroid is determined by the first moment of an area. Whereas the moment of inertia, we take the second moment of an area. So for moment of inertia about the y-axis, we have this formula. And for the polar moment of inertia, we have this. The polar moment of inertia about a reference point O is simply equal to the moment of inertia about the x-axis plus the moment of inertia about the y-axis. Now, in case we wanted to determine the moment of inertia from a certain reference point, in this case, our reference is not exactly lying along our centroid. So we have here a reference point O. So if we wanted to take the moment of inertia about the x-axis, then we have this formula. So we have the moment of inertia about the centroid and plus the area times the square of the distance with respect to the x-axis. In this case, our d square here is equals to y square. Okay. Now, if we are required to determine the moment of inertia about the y-axis, then we only need this formula here. So it is equal to the moment of inertia about the centroid plus the area times the square of the distance. In this case, since our centroid if we take moment of inertia about the y-axis, then the distance is equal to x bar. So in this case, our d square here is equal to x bar square. And if we are required to determine the polar moment of inertia, then it is simply equal to the moment, the polar moment of inertia about its centroid plus the area times d square. In this case, our d square here is simply equal to r. The d is equal to r or equal to a times r square. Okay, so let us now have an illustrative example. Illustrative example number one. Determine the moment of inertia for the rectangular area with respect to A, the centroidal x-axis, in this case, along this axis here, B, the axis passing through the base of the rectangular area. So in this case, for letter B, we'll take moment of inertia about the base, and C, the polar moment of inertia passing through the centroid, C. Okay, so that is our centroid C. So, 
for letter A. We are required to determine the moment of inertia about the x-axis. So, Ix is equal to equal to the integral of y squared the a. Now, looking at the figure, our day a differential area is simply equal to b times dy. So, this equation becomes and since this is about the x-axis, then our, our limit should be from negative h over 2 to positive h over 2. So we have here the integral of the limits are negative h over 2 to positive h over 2. We have y squared times r area which is equals to b d y. So, this becomes since b is constant we can take out b and we have b times the integral of negative h over 2 limits to positive h over 2 we have y squared the y and which simplifies to b h cube over 12 so this is our answer for letter a and for letter b about the base so we are required to determine the moment of inertia about our base we have our ix in this case we will use the transfer formula because we take the moment of inertia about its space and not from its centroid we have ix plus e d squared so previously we already have determined our ix our ix is simply equal to bx cube over 12 so this becomes ix is b x cube over 12 plus the area our area is simply equal to base times height since this is a rectangle so we have area equals to base times height times since our distance from the base to the centroid is equals to h over 2 our d here is equals to h over 2 squared now simplifying this further we have one third v h cube if you notice when your we take moment of inertia from the base we have a much larger value compared to the moment of inertia when it when the moment of inertia is taken about its centroid and letter c so by the way this is our answer for letter b and letter c the polar moment of inertia about point c okay so from the formula our polar moment of inertia is simply equal to the 
moment of inertia about the x-axis plus the moment of inertia about the y-axis. Now, previously, we already have determined the moment of inertia about the x-axis. So, what needs to be done is we will now determine the moment of inertia about the y-axis. So, we have iy is simply equal to See, if we take moment of inertia about the y-axis, then this becomes, referring to the previous solution, we can have our moment of inertia would be equal to, our y is equal to h b cube over 12. If we take moment of inertia about the y-axis, then this becomes iy is equal to hb cube over 12. And our moment of inertia is simply equal to our ix is b its cube over 12 plus our iy which is equal to h b cube over 12. We can factor out our b h over 12. So we have b h over 12 times it squared plus b squared. So this is now our polar moment of inertia. Okay, let us have another illustrative example. Determine the moment of inertia of the figure shown about the x-axis. So we have here, this curve here is equal to y squared equals to 400x and our base is 100 millimeter. Now, since this is an irregular shape, it would be best to solve this using the integration formula. So, we can now have Ix. Ix is equal to integral of y squared dA. Now, from the figure, our dA is equals to, our dA is equals to this length times this. So, it is equals to 100x, 100 minus x rather, times your dy. Take note that we have this equation. So we can determine our x. So from this, we can have our x is equals to y squared over 400. So we can now have our dA is equals to 100 minus y squared over 400 times our dy. So this is now our dA. So we will substitute this in our equation. So Ix, and by the way, the limits are from, I forgot, okay, by the way, it is only up to 200. 200 millimeter okay so our limit should be from 0 to 200 so our limit is from 0 to 200 we have y squared times our d is 100 minus 
y squared over 400 times dy. So, simplifying this further, integrating this, we'll have 100 six 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 point seven or we can have we have one hundred seven times ten to the power six quartic millimeter So this is now our moment of inertia with respect to the x-axis. Okay. Now, there are times wherein it would be very useful if you know the centroid and moment of inertia for common shapes. So, I suggest you memorize formulas for the centroids and moment of inertia for common shapes. Now, of course, there are a lot of shapes and this is just for presentation purposes only. So, for rectangular area, then the centroid is as point C and the moment of inertia about the base is equal to bh cube over 12. And with respect to the centroid, it's equal to bh cube over 12. And the polar moment of inertia is simply equal to bh over 12 times b squared plus h squared, which we have previously determined. So on and so forth. Okay, so let us have the last but not the least illustrative example. Determine the moment of inertia about the centroidal x-axis. So this is our figure. So this is the solid part and this is our hollow part here. So to determine the moment of inertia, what we need to do is simply we determine the moment of inertia of this larger rectangle, then we subtract the moment of inertia of this smaller rectangle here. Okay, so that is how we determine the moment of inertia with respect to the x-axis, the centroidal x-axis. So we have Ix is simply equal to, we have here base 1, B base 1, which is base 1 for the first figure, each one of the first figure, the larger rectangle, be its cube over 12, minus R, B2, H2 cube over 12, which is your smaller rectangle, such that will have an effective moment of inertia equivalent to the actual figure. So we have our Ix is equal to, we have our base is equal to 4. 4 inches times the height is the total height is 6 inches which is we have 4 6 to the cube over 12 minus for the smaller rectangle we have the base is 2 with a total height of 4 inches for the smaller rectangle over 12 so, Ix is equal to 28 over 3 or this equals to 9.33 quartic inches. So, this is our answer. If you like the content of this video, click like, subscribe, 
and please share. Thank you.